Hawaiian plate lunch in San Bruno. From the first bite, I said this is heaven. Party vibes and playful pies in San Francisco. Just an amazingly unctuous dish. And German brews, braises, and brats in San Jose. <laughs> Just ahead, Uncheck Please Bay Area. It was a lot of food. It was a lot of food. <laughs> Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests, and each one recommends one of their favorite spots, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. Joining me at the Check Please table today are IT Operations Manager Daniel Osers, Marketing Director Cindy Wong Zarin, and Chef and CEO Vanessa Silva. Welcome, everyone. Whenever she's in Hawaii, Cindy and her family love to hit up the markets, digging into everything from colorful shave ice to Kahlua pork to fresh off the boat poke. Now she's found the perfect place to get all those items without ever having to hop on a plane. Located along El Camino Real in San Bruno, it's Diamond Head General Store. Diamond Head General Store is a slice of Hawaii in San Bruno. The whole general store concept came about from the old Japanese American general stores that were prevalent in Hawaii back in the day. They serve plate lunches, bentos, musubis, mom and pop operation. Good home cooked food, but in kind of like a casual atmosphere. That's what I grew up on, that's what I associate my time in Hawaii as far as eating, so that's where I kind of draw on as far as inspiration. He's the brains, I'm the muscle. Yeah, she's the muscle. <laughs> a little bit of Hawaiian sea salt. As far as the flavor profiles and how they relate to Hawaii, I think they're pretty spot on, but us being us, we kind of have to do our own little tweak on the dishes itself. For example, our mochiko chicken. We kind of melded the two styles of fried chicken together. So you get the flavor of the mochiko fried chicken, but you get the crispiness and the crunch of like a southern fried chicken. For me, my favorite dish is garlic shrimp. We think our garlic shrimp is pretty damn good. So I think it stands up to anything that you can get on the island. Different. Yeah. Let's not get us in hot water. <laughs> <laughs> We get a lot of Hawaii transplants up here, especially the older generation. A lot of people with big stomachs, just because we have giant portions, and they know that. I hope the food transports them there, and so even if you're working and hustling and bustling, for that one moment, you can just rest and just feel happy. Now, Cindy, we all love to go to the islands, of course. How did you discover this place? Actually, my best friend who lives in San Bruno, also a fellow working mother, was the one who turned me on to it, and it has just been a godsend because the portions are ginormous, right? So, I mean, that's really great for me as the mom who goes in, places an order, picks it up, and then takes it home and splits it into two, and it's like, here you go, dinner for two. Increases right affordability. It definitely immensely. does, for sure, Absolutely. for sure. Yeah. So what is a dish that you or your kids love that you Oh, we are creatures of habit. Mm -hmm. We are always going for the mochiko fried chicken. <laughs> so the chicken is typically dark cut, boneless. Yeah, so juicy. So right, juicy. Very, juicy, very juicy, which makes it very juicy. It is, to me, fried to perfection. They bread it in the mochiko flour before they bread it into another flour to fry it. So when you take your first bite, you've got the moistness of the chicken against the little bit of chewiness of the mochiko flour, followed by the crunch of the crust, right? So marry that against the furikake with this little subtle sweet sauce. Mm -hmm. on top, mm -hmm. and it's just an explosion of flavor. And you both said yes and shaking your head. So let's, Vanessa? Just the juiciness mm -hmm. right, of that darker meat. Absolutely, and then I'll give it a huge compliment. I'm, I don't get excited about chicken too much. Chicken to me is bland, <laughs> oh, no. it's boring, yeah. I don't usually order it. And I bit into it, and it was amazing. amazing. Salty, spicy, sweet. The because frikake, it, yeah. Exactly, it stayed crispy the whole way through. So I, I was, I'm, I'm a believer. Yes, and I think with the mac salad, which even though it's very simple, mm -hmm. it just marries really nicely with the rest of the dish. It offers a balance to the chicken. And we always get the Kahlua pork. To me, it's one of their signature dishes. You get that full flavor and the juiciness of the pork mm. without any of the fat and the tanginess of the pickled onions mm -hmm. balanced against the juiciness of the pork. Together that with the rice and the mac salad. You can imagine yourself in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Sure. I also had the garlic shrimp. Oh, yes. 
what is that garlic? Right. It's like spicy garlic, mm -hmm. but yeah. it's also a little bit tangy. Mm -hmm. And the shrimp, it was just like giant prawns. And then it comes with the same accompaniment. right. Yes, right. it was amazing. And then we also got the Japa taters. Jap Have you had that? Yes, yes. Well, I kind of wish I was hungover. <laughs> yeah, that is actually a really good hangover. We'll take a few yeah. wine and we can make yeah, that maybe happen. tomorrow. Yeah. Because it's like it's messy, it's wet, and mm. like mm. it's French fries with mayo and all this bonito flakes on top. Oh my god, it's <laughs> just amazing. We had the pokey, which mm -hmm. I thought was excellent. It was very fresh, right? Very often yes. you get frozen tuna now, and it was mm -hmm. not. It was really, really good. I probably ordered the wrong one because I had the Hawaiian style, like sauces. So next time I'll come back for the chili garlic or the, the other ones, but it was excellent. And we had spa musubi, which I will say was the only disappointment, only because oh. it was a lot of rice and it was not not good but it didn't stand out. I think there's a lot of different ways to make it. Sure. And I definitely agree, they have a lot of rice with mm -hmm. theirs. But what I would say, what's a little bit unique about their place is that they have different combinations. Mm -hmm. My son loves the one with the mochiko fried chicken in it. Mm -hmm. yes, he literally have, wow. told me one time, he goes, mommy, you just need to <laughs> buy this and nothing else for me. Mm -hmm. And that's saying a lot because they serve shave ice, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you all try the shave ice? Yeah. It's a small baby's head size. <laughs> it is, right? and it's huge, right? and it looks so good, and it's yeah. so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I will say, I was amazed by the flavors. I mean, it's, it's a whole wall of flavors. Flavor. Well, what I really love about it is how fine the ice crystals are mm. shaved down. So combined with the different syrup flavors. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the kids like to make it, they call it like a snow cap. So they sometimes pour the condensed milk on top. Oh so my that, God, as if that being condensed milk. Right, yeah. as if that <laughs> couldn't make it any sweeter, right? Already it's pretty <laughs> sweet, right? But then at the very bottom, there's some ice cream. You can choose a couple different flavors. My kids tend to choose vanilla. And mm. that's just like a nice finish after having all that delicious iciness. Yeah. And let's talk about kind of the ambiance and the service because mm -hmm. you're not talking about a it's you know, very fine casual. dining service. Yeah, for sure. Right. It's very very casual place. You'll find some people eating there if it's like their lunch break, but it's very much a grab and go kind of place. They actually have a whole section like where you saw the masubi of things that you can just grab if you didn't want to order and wait to order yeah. like a plate lunch. And it is a store, right? So you can pick up some eclectic items. Absolutely. In fact, while we were waiting for our food, we went through the aisles and it's chock full of Hawaiian goods and Japanese goods. And we bought uh, soy sauces, furikake, uh, spices that either you cannot get in the Bay Area or it's very hard to get them all together. Mm -hmm. So it was amazing. We, we, had, we had two big bags that we, uh, we carried home. That's yeah. dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> so you would go back? I would go back, yes. Okay, now I know what to go back to. For sure. <laughs> yeah. You're going to oh, yeah. go back. Yeah. You got your oh, orders yeah. now. For sure. All right. If you would like to try Diamond Head General Store, it's located on El Camino Real in San Bruno, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $25. Vanessa is a culinary artista who teaches people to cook using seasonal and sustainable ingredients. Now she's found a restaurant aligned with her values, where not a scrap of food goes to waste as the founders do their part to save the planet, one pizza at a time. Located in San Francisco's Mission District, it's Shuggie's Trash Pie and Natural Wine. So roasted cauliflower, walnut, ají amarillo, and some gutiha on that one. Enjoy. Shiggy's Trash Pie and Natural Wine is our restaurant. Shiggy's is just short for sugar. <laughs> Trash Pie is that fun, playful nod to utilizing food waste. Uh, lots of folks think, oh, maybe they're dumpster diving, but no, it's all just sexy stuff that comes from the farm. We waste up to 40% of our food supply in America every year. But for us, food waste means a bunch of different stuff from the farm that is perfectly great to eat, but is left over because it's cosmetically regular or it's surplus. We got all these beautiful herb stems that we do all kinds of fun little sauces out of that guy. Traditionally, folks lop off onion roots and onion tops. Uh, we dehydrate those, make a cool little onion powder out of that. Pretty much every protein on our menu is an offcut, and that's really just a product of American pickiness. A lot of these things culturally are not offcuts in other places, but because we live here, they are often discarded. So we are kind of elevating those and making sure people are trying these really amazing parts that are often the most flavorful and yeah. the best to use. Eat stuff besides chicken breast and ribeye. <laughs> I love pizza. Pizza's been my favorite food forever. 
Argo is really cool because that's where baseline every single one of our pizzas starts with upcycled oat flour from the oat milk making process and then we also utilize whey from the cheese baking process. So the base of every single pizza that you eat here, it's already starting off helping out the planet, which is pretty cool. Over the past year that we've been open alone, we've sequestered 20,000 pounds of food from going to waste. It all comes down to people coming in and eating and being open to trying all these weird things that we're putting on the menu and hopefully change the way they interact with the world as well. Now, Vanessa, it's interesting because it sounds like your philosophy of sustainability and seasonality aligns with this restaurant, right? A hundred percent. So the concept is amazing. Being in the food industry, I think that uh, there is a lot of food waste. Mm -hmm. And, you know, besides being a chef, I also studied holistic nutrition. And I don't know if you guys know, but the, the most nutritious meats are the organ meats mm -hmm. so that we end up not eating. So that's what they are doing. And I was like, okay, this is a place to try. Some of the most tasty pieces, too. I agree with you. Not everybody knows that. <laughs> David Murphy, the chef, comes from a fine dining background. So mm -hmm. he brings that kind of sophistication and then he transforms into something very accessible. Mm -hmm. So the fish stick actually being Brazilian, Portuguese, it's a take on a bacalao brandado. Mm -hmm. So it's dried salted fish right. with mashed potatoes and then it's formed and then it's deep fried. Mm -hmm. So the inside is rich and soft mm -hmm. with the crunchy top and then it sits on this bowl of a dill panna cotta. It's just, you know, very creative, very yeah. brilliant. Yep. So Daniel, what did you start with? So we started with the uh, roasty bones, which mm. is bone marrow. And there it was a beautiful plate again, huge portion with the sauce sizzled on it. It was spicy, spicy sauce exactly. on top. Yeah. A little bit buttery and everything. Mm -hmm. It had the bread with it, which you need for the bone marrow. It was sort of sesame. So it had this like offtake of sesame. Uh, you, you put the bone marrow and you have the spice. Fantastic. Greatly balanced and really, really good. Mm -hmm. um, and we had the pepperoni pizza. Oh. So a very, very simple thing. And it was amazing because it wasn't just a silly marinara sauce. It was fruity tomato. And the pepperoni was very different. You could taste an interesting right. meat with it. It was juicy. It had a bite to it. We took some of that home and that actually warmed up fantastically well. Your it next was day. Awesome. Yeah, I'm similar to you. I thought their pizzas were great. I thought the crust was really nicely done. Like I think they call it like grandma's mm -hmm. style. And it literally felt like, yeah, it's someone's grandma pushing mm -hmm. this crust into the pan and creating this delicious pizza. I loved how they used this grape must, which I had to look up afterwards. It's mm -hmm. actually like I think comes from the skin of the grapes. But what's really nice is that it lent some sweetness, which was really nice because it was a nice balance against the spiciness of the sausage. That balance with like the whey vodka sauce I thought was great. Did you have anything else? I had the Greek goddess salad, ah. which I just loved how it came out. The little pedestal. The pedestal that is a bust of like a Greek goddess and it's on two skewers. They had the little baby gem lettuce leaves, some tomatoes that, you know, you think like maybe, well, they're a little bruised, right? right. But the reality is that they're quite sweet, mm -hmm. you know, even mm -hmm. though they're a little bruised. And so you marry that with a little bit of the dressing. The I green mean, goddess. Yeah, the, yeah it was so just rich. so yeah. delicious. <laughs> And I think it must be said that the, the presentation is beautiful for everything they do. I also thought the food itself, they always were accented with, like, rich with sour, a little spicy yeah. with something else. The yeah. chef sent as a compliment to the table, the beef heart mm -hmm. meatballs. Mm -hmm. It's packed with flavor. It's dense, meaty. But then he has, like, a, a tomato sauce, but there is a couple of other sauces, so everything balances out. Mm -hmm. I love the crispy calamari, or crispy squid. Yes, that's how they and call it. And first, there are little squids that goes into the sustainability thing. Right. It's crispy and has these different accompaniments, the different yes. sauces. Like the pickled jalapeno, Ooh, right? That's yeah, that so was great right, with the sauces. It was perfect. Uh -huh. And they're not spicy. They're just pickled and nice, and they offset the richness of the richness of the fried, yeah. Yeah, I very agree. nice. Any desserts? We had the chocolate semi freddo. Oh, okay. We just about shared it because that was all we could do after ordering five things. Right. It was really, really good. Not too sweet, it was chocolatey. Do you yeah. ever get dessert when you're there? I always have orange wine for dessert. <laughs> 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 That's a good choice. All right, y'all. I hear you're the lucky one. Did any of you guys have the orange shower? <laughs> the next table over did. You should talk about it. All right, well, it sounds like something that we shouldn't be talking about. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, that's why Come the on. pizza I ordered, I ordered the sausage party. And I was like, I'm in the <laughs> restaurant in the mission. Why am I not ordering I want to have an orange party? shower and a sausage party. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like the mission. No! <laughs>
Okay. Right. 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 So there is this glass container. It looks like a decanter with a beak. Okay. And you just lean back, and she pours. It's like know. a poron. In, in oh, Rioja, yes, yes, exactly. In, in Rioja, you have a poron, it's which a poron. is like a decanter but with a spout. Yes. And the real trick is how far you can get from your mouth to get a nice stream going. Yes. And there does go. a poron. So that's what I think. I do think it's a good date place. <laughs> Isn't this fun? There is like a lot of, you know, or like a, a, a group place. Yeah. And what do you guys think of the decor? I liked it. Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> Funky. Kitschy. I liked it. It's like green, Lime green yellow. And yellow. Yeah. I mean, there's this actual hands the, that for the you seat. sit on. Uh, sit right. <laughs> right. There's a seat, right? And, and there's a bar on both sides that is reflective. It, it, it's funky, but in a, in a really funny way. And just, they are literally a restaurant that is the quintessential San Francisco in every which way, but from the food to the staff to the service to the decor. You guys liked it. <laughs> yeah. So I think they all need to go back with you. Yeah, yes. let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, if you would like to try Shuggie's Trash Pie and Natural Wine, it's located on 23rd Street in San Francisco's Mission District, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $40. It's been more than two decades since Daniel moved to California from Germany. But in all that time, he never lost his love for the hearty Gasthaus dishes of his homeland. Luckily, he's found a local beer garden serving up all the sausage and schnitzel and spätzle he can eat. Tucked away in downtown San Jose, it's Teskey's Germania Restaurant and Beer Garden. Let's get this party started! <laughs> Teskey's Germania restaurant is, we feel, the most authentic German restaurant in the Bay Area. And we're a family restaurant, always have been. It's just soft right now, buddy. It's what we've been doing for 35 years. I think what my family has tried to accomplish over the years is what the Germans call Gemütlichkeit, meaning we welcome you, we invite you, please come share what we're sharing. We want you to enjoy what we enjoy. I would say our food is Southern German Schwäbisch Bavarian. Our most popular dish would be the Jäger Schnitzel. It's a bread and pork cutlet with our homemade spätzle and our white wine mushroom sauce. That is like the number one item here by far. By far. I will say like at McDonald's, you see billions and billions of hamburgers. At Teskey's, we're probably in a couple million schnitzels <laughs> since we've been here. You know. We make our spätzle fresh pretty much every day here, just the way our grandmother made it, the way my father made it. A lot of people will order two, three, four items, and we put them on a big platter, and we'll put it right in the middle of the table, and everybody just kind of goes to town. I think that a lot of older Germans that lived here in the Bay Area, like my father, are passing on, but I think it's pretty neat that their children still want to be a part of it. At least when I was younger, I didn't want to go to a German place. I was like, oh my God, that's what Oma listens to. But the young people here, they embrace it. They like it. We need to have everybody raise their beer glasses up high. With our German band, the Internationals, which we love to death. We've been partners with them for 35 years now. You know, so many people, they travel all over the world, they travel to Germany, and they come back and they're expecting sort of what they got in Munich when they go to Oktoberfest. And we can satisfy that craving, <laughs> no problem. So now this is tough. You judging a beer garden, being a German, mm -hmm. how does Teskey's rate? So I, I love it. I think it's fantastic. There, there, there are a lot of uh, German restaurants in the Bay Area, which I think is awesome. I have not found one that is as authentic and as homey and as community as, as Teskis is. Okay, first recommendation. Somebody who's never been there walks in, what should they order? Whew, it's a good question. I probably would say the Schweinshaxe which ah. is a very iconic dish. Okay. It's a pork knuckle, right? Mm -hmm. Very traditional in Europe in general, even the Alsace and in mm -hmm. Germany. But in southern Germany, it's done in a way where it's very crisp. Mm -hmm. Skin is on. There is a lot of fat in a good way. You want the fat. Mm -hmm. It's salty. It's crispy. The pork is incredibly mm -hmm. juicy. You mm -hmm. kind of put it apart, and it's offset with you know, either sauerkraut or red cabbage that's been marinated or a potato salad that's slightly mm -hmm. warm and has meat in it. And it's just an amazingly unctuous dish. And it's a dish you would have in a guest house, exactly. right? Oh. And, mm -hmm. and, and washes fantastically down with beer. 
<laughs> and German beer. They have so many German beers. You're right. Yeah. And I love German beer on tap. If it's tapped right, mm -hmm. they usually have seven or eight different ones. It's a full bar, so mm -hmm. you can drink anything you want, but I, I obviously go for the German beer. Mm -hmm. yeah. What did you have? I started with actually the potato pancakes because mm. I love potato pancakes, and I think that the way they did it was so interesting. It's a little different than maybe, let's say if you have latkes. It wasn't like a grated potato, but it was more like a mashed potato. Mm -hmm. And then the person I went with and I, we could have swore that the applesauce was homemade because we both were saying, it's not overly sweet and goopy. So mm -hmm. like, it must be homemade. I wanted to have the, the pork knuckle, but uh, I was with my boyfriend and he was just like, I don't do that. <laughs> but So we had the smoked pork chop. Yes. Oh. That was amazing. But I'm not so familiar with German food. What was different for me, I love sauerkraut just for all the nutritional mm -hmm. value, but there is warm. It's warm as in the sauce, mm -hmm. the cabbage, and that was really good. The way the sourness and the way the cabbage is done contrasts with the pork chop. And it was <laughs> a pork chop. <laughs> it was a big. <laughs> what did big. you have after? Right. I had the pork schnitzel. Yeah. yeah, which yeah. was delicious. Love just it. breaded pork, mm -hmm. right? I had never seen a piece of pork that was breaded and fried that perfect golden color. It came with this delicious white wine mushroom sauce mm -hmm. that from the first bite, I said, this is heaven. Yeah. You could taste the white wine without it being overpowering. Mm -hmm. And it just was perfect complement to the crispiness and the juiciness of the pork. Mm -hmm. And then I had never had spetzel. Spitzler. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I've never had that before, and I thought that was a perfect accompaniment. Okay. Yeah, yeah I had the, the Spetzler with the sausages. How do you call the sausage? Yeah, there's different sausages from wild boar to pork based. Which I think it was a pork okay. based sausage, it was really good with a mushroom sauce. Mm -hmm. I will say it's very hearty. Yes. <laughs> yes. And we had the German Riesling with oh, the beautiful. food. That's right. So, so they've talked about the schnitzel, the sausages. What else should they have? And my personal favorite is the herring. These pieces of herring fillet, which you know in Europe is very, very popular, and a sauce with apples and with onions. I just love it. With bread, without bread, I don't care. Love it. And I really like the goulash, mm -hmm. which is basically oh. a beef stew mm -hmm. with a bit of paprika. And it seems, again, very simple, but it shines when it's really simple because it's rich. It's a little spicy. Not really, but, but a little. And it comes on spätzle again, so mm -hmm. it's very saucy. And just a very comforting, homey dish. Probably better for for cold seasons, but it's just wonderful. Mm -hmm. I was with my daughter, too, and she had the buffalo burger. Oh. It uses a darker oh, yeah. pretzel uh -huh. bun that was really good. And also I was surprised the french fries were really good. I'm mm. a french fry snob a little bit. You know, like mm. if you're going to eat french fries, they got to be really good. Absolutely. Yeah. And they were really good. Awesome. Okay, okay. I, I love now them. it is time for desserts. Yes. So, what did you have for dessert? I had the soccer tort. Yes. Well, I don't know what that is. It's a, a very good choice, first of all. Uh, and I will also call out the, the all the desserts are homemade. homemade. The Sacher Torte is literally a chocolatey cake. Mm -hmm. Well, probably the world's most famous chocolate cake. Exactly. Yes. Viennese from the Sacher Hotel. Exactly, Leslie. It has a little bit of fruitiness to it because it's usually a tiny little layer of like an apricot jam and, mm -hmm. and, and the chocolate around it's it. It's encased with the, that chocolate. So what yes. you do is you put your fork in it, you crack the chocolate, and you get that little oh bit of jam. God. Then you get the little bit of soft cake, and then you dip it in your whipped cream and your raspberry sauce that has just the touch of like, I want to say brandy taste to it. Mm -hmm. It yep. is a symphony in your mouth. And hey, Vanessa, you have dessert? I had apple strudel. Yep. Oh, yes. I wasn't so impressed. Ah. Okay. It was okay. I think it was a little bit bready, but mm. again, it might be the German home style, which I'm not familiar with. Mm. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Yes. But next time I want that cake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm cake. Cake. That sounds amazing. Good appetit. Enjoy. Okay. I just really appreciated the recommendations because this was my first time going to a German restaurant in the Bay Area, and I really appreciated the thoughtfulness that the waiter mm -hmm. had coming around and suggesting. And it's a family-friendly place for sure. It's very family-friendly. I mean, I would go back there with my family again because I'm like you all try different types of comfort food now it's time to try some German comfort food and let's come here yeah. if you would like to try Tusky's Germania restaurant and beer garden it's located on North First Street in San Jose and the average tab per person without drinks is around $35 looking for more Bay Area bites you've just got to try Slap to check out <laughs> Cecilia tries it online at kqed.org slash check please 
I have to thank my great guests on this week's show, Daniel Osers, who washes down his herring with a big Hefeweizen at <laughs> Teskey's Germania Restaurant and Beer Garden in San Jose. Cindy Wong Zarin, who found a taste of Hawaii in San Bruno at Diamond Head General Store. And Vanessa Silva, who loves the kitschy vibe and sustainable menu at Shuggy's Trash Pie and Natural Wine in San Francisco. Join us next time when three more guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQED and by... It's going to my doctor. Without actually going. Graham's Port has been family owned and operated for over 200 years. Available at Vintage and FineWines.com or your local fine wine retailer. Fog Harbor Fish House is a local family owned restaurant offering sweeping views of the San Francisco Bay. Fog Harbor serves fresh, 100% sustainable seafood featuring specialties including roasted shellfish platters, chipino, and oysters. Located at Pier 39 in San Francisco, reserve at fogharbor.com. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com Aboard Oceana Cruises, our guests savor every moment of the journey. Half of our staff and crew is dedicated to the culinary experience. Our chefs are inspired by the flavors of the world and committed to perfecting fine dining at sea. That's Oceana Cruises.